Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we are reading Genesis chapter 48. As we go through this chapter, may the Lord speak to each one of us. This chapter deals with Manasseh and Ephraim. It came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, Indeed your father is sick. And uh, Joseph took him, his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me and said, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. I will make you a company of peoples and give this land as everlasting possession to your descendants. And now your two sons born to you in the Egypt, Ephraim and Manasseh are mine, as Reuben and Simeon are mine. Any children born after them are yours. They will inherit the land belonging to the brothers. As for me, when I came from Padan, to my sorrow, Rachel died beside me in Canaan and distance to Ephrathah, and I buried her along the way. Then Jacob saw the boys and asked, Who are these? Joseph said, These are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And Jacob said, Bring them closer to me, so I can bless them. Now the eyes of the Israel were dim in the age, so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact, God has allowed to see your children also. And Joseph positioned the boys, Ephraim with his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near to his father. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the anger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph, saying, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, who has been my shepherd all my days of my life, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys, and they be called by my name Abraham, Isaac, and increase them greatly on this earth. Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. His father refused and said, I know my son, I know. He shall also become a people and he shall also become a great. But truly his younger brother Ephraim shall become a greater than he and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. Thus he blessed them, saying, By your name Israel will be blessed, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of Amorites with my sword and my bow. Some of the questions I put here, we can go through this for a while. What is the purpose and effect of Jacob's blessing? Who was this angel referred in verse 17? Why did right hand mean a better blessing? And why did Jacob put the anger ahead of the older? How can we put this into a modern day context? Imagine being a Christian for many years waiting for the fulfillment of God's promise and seeing a relatively new believer being blessed in every way. How would you respond? Would you say God is being unfair or partial? In teaching of the parable of vineyard workers in Matthew chapter 20 verse 1 to 16, Jesus characterized such people as those with an envious eye because of God's generosity to others. The prophet Isaiah tells us that God's ways and thoughts are much higher than ours. The Lord doesn't see as a man sees, who looks and observes things outwardly, he looks at the heart. We need to eliminate our worldly mindset and seek to be renewed by the wisdom and the light that comes from the God's word. The Bible is filled with such examples where we can align to the perspective of Christ. It is here where we are able to see God's will in each situation as opposed to the ways and the values of the world. As the Lord is speaking to our hearts, may we have the perspective of Christ and look through the eyes of Christ. May the Lord bless the short meditation and the edification of our lives. Amen.